Hi, this is Ryan Schultz, and welcome to Metaverse Newscast, the show where we interview the personalities behind social VR, virtual worlds, and the metaverse. Today, I had the very great pleasure of interviewing Nozaj, who is the creator of the domain called Beyond, which was voted the best domain in the best domain contest that was recently held at the Future Lands Festival in High Fidelity. Nozaj, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you for having me. And I don't know if I've said this to you on camera before, but this is the best VR experience I've visited all year. And I have been to dozens and dozens of experiences. So thank, oh, thank you. you. And congratulations you. on winning the contest. Oh, thank you. Can you tell me a little bit about your background? How did you get involved with social VR and virtual worlds in the first place? Well, I did um, illustration at university. Okay. And I, I happened to get the original DK1 when it came out. Oh, cool. So I was there from a fairly early, like, you know, early year. And then just as I, as I played with different games and various things, I came across High Fidelity. And uh, this is the one place where I felt like I could actually not just experience what people do in these worlds, but actually take part and make something myself. So yeah, after doing illustration at university, I branched out into applied media and I was able to utilize virtual reality in that course. Oh, interesting. And that's kind of the seed for some of this world is some of the work I did for that. I wouldn't say I've repurposed it exactly, but I've sort of grown on the concept of this alien location. Can you tell me a little bit about your inspiration in creating Beyond? Yeah, um, I'm not really sure what my inspiration is really. I mean, it's like the ideas, the aesthetic of this place, I've thought about it for, for many years. It's, you know, it's one of my daydreams, one of the things I think about, you know, I've watched too much Star Trek over the years, so what would my alien planet look like and what okay. would happen on that, that place? So this is, this is my take on a, you know, an alien locale. And I like to think that you get the impression that something has happened here or there's a slightly dynamic quality to this world, which you can pick up on if you walk through it. Uh, I can see that you're wearing body trackers. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm wearing five extra trackers. So I have the headset and the controllers. Okay. And then I have five, five trackers on my body. Okay. Where are they located? Uh, so I have one on my, on my feet. Okay. And then one on my hips. Okay. And then one on each shoulder. So you know, they, they oh, capture nice. most of my movements quite well. You have particle effects in Hi-Fi, right? Like, I notice there's smoke rising, rising from that crater there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have particle effects yet in Sansar. Yeah, see, in, in the translocator, there's light inside. And what I did is I had a bright, a bright smoke effect that quickly vanishes and is replaced by a grey smoke effect. Okay. So the idea was it should look illuminated, and as it leaves the light field, it should look like the light disappears. Okay. Okay. I spent quite a lot of time on the particle effects. Well, a long time because I don't actually know what I'm doing. So a lot of this is just sort of trial and error. And just yeah. Constantly Which is to be expected for a new virtual world. Yeah. And you made all the statues yourself? I made, I would say, 98% of all of the content in here. Okay. I think the only thing that isn't mine is actually the sky. That was from the market. Okay. And uh, some of the sound effects, some of them are synthesizers, but others are from uh, sound libraries, and I've manipulated the sounds. But I noticed the, the circles in the sky rotate very slowly. It's a lovely effect. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, I like the way it cuts out the sun. And casts yes, shadows. when the shadow falls on you. Yeah, it's nice. I particularly like the way you set it up like a story where you follow into the valley here. Yeah. I. I, I did intend to have narrative elements in here. I haven't implemented them yet. And I'm not sure that I will either, but it's something I might do. Well, I don't think they're absolutely necessary. There's a lot to be said for just going and exploring. Yeah, I think so. And just let your imagination fill in the blanks. You know, it took me a little bit to figure out how to get up these stairs. <laughs> 
so Nozage, this starts, this is the starting place of your domain, your experience. Yeah. And uh, we seem to be on some planet where there's a snowstorm raging outside. The effects are very good. Um, what was your inspiration for creating this spaceship? Well, I wanted a start, like a controlled starting zone where, where stuff would load in really quickly and it would set the mood and okay. get people on their way. So, but I really like, what I really like about this place is the, the sense of being safe in here. It's a bit spooky. But outside there's a storm and it's dark and, you know, those copper trees are being lit up. But in right. here it feels safe. I, I yes. quite like that feeling. You feel protected. Yeah. 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 And of, over there, of course, is the teleport that takes you down to the planet's surface. Uh, right. And because I'm such a nerd, I'd have to say it's a translocator rather a than trans a translocator. Okay. Mm. Gotcha. <laughs> but um, it's, it's part of the technology that the beings that live or lived here had or have and um it, it, eventually i will have many of these translocators i mean this this is like a small i think of it as a spaceship essentially i mean it's down on the planet but it would be nice to start in space ideally and then phew, come down here so this is just a start for you you're planning on expanding this yes i mean if you turn around there's a, a sort of circle on the wall over there yes eventually that will open on, on when people approach it it will open Okay. And the rest of the teleporters or translocators will be through there. Oh, I see. Okay. How it's long did it take you to build this? Hmm. I'm not sure. Several months. I don't oh, know wow. how many hours, but I had some long days in here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can imagine it took a long time. It's such a huge monumental experience. Well, you see, I used to play a lot of hardcore games. Like, I played a lot of Elite Dangerous, and I sat there for a week to get this spaceship. And I thought to myself... If I can literally sit here for a week and waste my time, what could I do if I actually applied myself? And now okay. I've focused that energy on this, I feel like I'm on the path to, to something a bit more exciting in my future. Great. I think that's wonderful. Uh, where would you like to take me for another spot? Um, perhaps one of the caves with the echoes. Oh, that would be wonderful, actually. Yes. Go ahead. Lead on. Okay. To the translocator. To the translocator, <laughs> Andrew. Uh, Nazaj, we're in a crystal cave that's hidden behind a waterfall in one of the places on Beyond. I'm going to leave it up to the viewer to figure out how to find this spot. It's not that easy. Um, I do want to ask you, uh, the, the statues, the, the cave, everything, how much of that was stuff that you built yourself? All of that stuff I built myself in ZBrush. Okay. 100%. Okay. Cool. Very, very interesting. So um, I can see why it took you months and months to put this together. So this is the problem. And also you get to that strange stage where the first few weeks, it seems like you get so much done. And then as you start fixing little things, it just takes longer and longer and longer. So what yeah. was the biggest challenge that you had to face in building this? Constructing all of this stuff underground. I didn't think it through. I just sort of made a section of tunnel, made a chamber, made another section of tunnel. And suddenly I'd, I, I'd, put the tunnel underneath something above and it, the sound broke or the lighting was wrong and it took me ages rebuilding all of the tunnels and reorientating them just right yeah because i wasn't thinking like a game developer i should have made sections that i could stick together like legos okay but instead i had this wild organic process which looks nice but was very very hard to work with well, one of the things that I think it really adds to the atmosphere is the layered soundscapes that you have put in here. Could you talk a bit about how you created those? Well, sure. I, I've Before I got into 3D stuff, I was... I wouldn't say I was a musician exactly, but I, I've made a lot of music over the past 15, 20 years. Okay. And I didn't actually realize until now, but I've actually learned something about sound. So, yeah, I know it's... I appreciate that sound has a fall off high pitch sound reflects, low pitch sound penetrates. Yes. And it's nice to just, yeah, to have layers of sound. There's two or three sounds playing right now, for instance. I can hear water, a drone. There's a science fiction E sound playing in the background as well. So I just think lots of little subtle sounds help with the atmosphere. 
Yes, I do agree with you totally. And I no, think in time as well, with better tools, it will get better because you can have, for instance, when we went into the cave, we had the um, reverberation effect. Yes. But there was an absolute cutoff between the two sections. So once we have fall off with those effects, the sound's going to be out of this world because the very nature of the rock will change the amount of reverberation. So hard rock will reflect the sound and porous rock will absorb it. So yes, you if you, uh, what you'll be able to do is something similar to what you already have in Sansar where you can set material types. And then when you walk on stone as opposed to grass, you'll have a different sound. So Definitely. that will come too, I'm sure. Yeah. And even better will be as you make that footstep, the sound will, you know, um, interact with the landscape to an extent. Yes. I think. Yes. Um, especially with that, the ray tracing that's been developed now as well with the RTX. It doesn't have to be used for reflections. It could be used for sound instead, for instance. Okay. So lots of cool stuff in our future, I think. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Um, I just hope that people who come here and like this, perhaps if they come back every three to six months, they may find that I've actually put something else in here by then. And uh, I hope they enjoy it. Well, you've just told them that. Nazaj, I would like to thank you very much from oh, the bottom pleasure. of my heart for this interview. I have really enjoyed this guided tour. And, the, and, the, and thank you. Thank you. And again, I'm Ryan Schultz, and this is Metaverse Newscast. <laughs> well, I'm a fairly sedate person most of the time, so, you know, I, I didn't I didn't go crazy or anything. I just, um, I counted up my winnings and I bought something fairly extravagant, but also useful. I, I've ordered wireless for my Vive headset, and I also have a phone that's now capable of uh, playing High Fidelity on. So, yeah, it was cool, and I used, I used the winnings for, yeah, semi-useful, but fun things. Oh. One of the things that they've talked about that I really like the sound of is, let's say I have myself and five or six friends and we all have high fidelity and we have this, you know, we have this absolutely gigantic, you know, 300 gigabyte monstrous world that we've made between us. What I like is the idea that we can share all of that information in a sort of uh, peer to peer network between us. So we host it locally, we share it and everything's distributed between us friends and we don't have to worry about size or, or bandwidth constraints or processing power because everybody has a gaming rig. So I, I like the idea that, yeah, we can just have this self-distributed uh, sort of experience. And then other people could also come in and join in and sort of share or tap into the bandwidth and sort of computational potential of our network. So that's something I would think would be really, really cool in the future. I guess the underlying technology of high fidelity, the, if you know what you're doing with the scripting, you can essentially do anything you like in here, you, in, in theory. So you have physics in here, so you can, you, know, you can have dynamic events that are physics-based, for instance. And also the streaming technology, I mean, that's what I like the most about this. High fidelity is like two or 300 megabytes to download. It's seconds with a decent internet connection. And as soon as I give somebody the address to this world, in theory, once we have the curated uh, download priority stuff sorted, one click, and then five seconds later, bam, they're in, in my world. And, and hopefully that will be the last time they see anything load up, they're just in. So what I like about High Fidelity is the way it makes my work very, very accessible to anyone with a reasonable computer and an okay internet connection. Yeah, that's one of Hi-Fi's big weaknesses right now, and I guess there needs to be some system where you can just have a fairly generic avatar and resize it, change all of the proportions, and then accessorize it easily. And then if people want, you know, um, bespoke avatars made for them, you know, they can commission one perhaps. But yeah, I think they need to make it basically a lot easier for people to make a basic avatar. Well, I guess it depends on their background and where they've come from. If, if they're working in two dimensions right now, then they're going to have to make the jump to three dimensions. 
and they're going to have to find and use a 3D program that they can get on with. Um, and for me, I like ZBrush very much, but I think Blender is a great choice for people. It's free, and I think it does almost everything that lots of other programs can do, but maybe not quite as well as those programs. But being free, the price is right. <laughs>